This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Trump Week on Fridays at the 11 o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel, and I care about following Trump. And that's Tim Apicello. He also cares about following Trump. Hi, Tim. Good morning. Thank you for having right. me. Yeah. Good to see you. Did you have a nice week? I had a great week. Yeah, I did. A little bit too I did much. not have a nice week. It was a little bit too much. A little too much. We're calling this show a week of too much news, too much chaos. And that's what we got. This is the week of chaos. One thing after another, you know. Like last week, he was being, he was being hurt by so many things coming up. And this week, I, I, I predicted, you know, this week he would do things to create the chaos in order to, dis, to distract us. And he did. He has distracted us in so many ways. Uh, and now, now uh, we are facing the, the shutdown. We have resignations in the White House. We have troop movements nobody, nobody thought was a good idea and various other things. It's really getting worse. The new normal is getting worse. And the new normal, in my view, uh, it, it, it uh, reflects sea changes where people don't realize how much things are changing and they get to accept the most outrageous things that they would never have accepted back in uh, you know mid 2016 so uh, 2017 i guess so you know the problem is uh, who's covering this we we have got to cover this it's not just a matter of suck, sucking him here and sucking him there it's trying to connect the dots so that's what trump week is about well, connecting the dots in, pertaining to the new normal yeah that's what really concerns me is what is the new normal and why is it becoming normal Okay, why? Um, repetition. It's the thing we talked about two weeks ago, the, um, the Russian strategy of, of the big lie and the re repetition of the big lie and then having you know, credible uh, figures to spread that message over and over and over again. And double down on it. Double and down on it. never admit the truth. Yeah. Never admit what you're really doing. That's correct. That's part of the New York that's Times part of the new, That's part of the new normal and that's how, bec that's how it's becoming a normal. And yeah. I, that concerns me. Yeah. To follow on that, I mentioned to you that a, a, a friend of mine sent me a link to a YouTube video of a Russian defector who talked about this very same thing that the New York Times was talking about, but it was scarier yet. I mean, it was for the proposition, and he's a Russian speaking now, <clears throat> for the proposition that they felt they were at war with us. They've always been at war with us. Glasnost was, you know, was frosting. In fact, they're still at war with us and more than before and other places. And they're using the, out of 100, you know, 100 uh, percent of the uh, of their intelligence budget. You know, 15 percent goes to espionage, 85 percent goes to active measures and disinformation. And we're getting that every day. Millions of these uh, messages on social media. That has not changed. Well, there was a recent new um, NBC Wall Street Journal poll. Let me just pull it out here for a quick second. And that was. Um, 62% of uh, people surveyed, they do believe Trump is lying about Russia. That's a high percentage. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, maybe he's, maybe he's losing ground with his base. Seems to be he's losing ground with the Republicans in, in the Senate. Um, but let's talk about specific things that happened. What's your, what's your favorite thing that happened this well, week? Well, the one that concerned me the most just recently happened, and that is the resignation of General Mattis. Um, I think General Mattis represented for many people, not just... Um, Republicans uh, in the Senate and the House of Representatives, but you know Americans as a whole, that Mattis was that stabilizing, calming effect on on Trump, and his resignation, I think, for a lot of people, will will signal that now who's minding the daycare center? <laughs> um, who who's now? In, it's not you know John Kelly anymore. It's who is it? Who's, yeah. Who's going to say you know you really can't do this? Is it going to be his family? Are they going to intercede before he um, jumps off and does something irrational and potentially destructive? Oh, he's doing irrational things all the time. It's amazing that the, the whole system is dysfunctional because there's nobody to stop him. He's becoming a one-man government, and he calls the shots on pretty much everything. Those tariffs, that was all him, and these moves with the troops that happened this week in Iraq, in both Iraq, that, that made the news first, then come to find that he's moving... Uh, more troops out of Afghanistan, 2,000 out of uh, Iraq, I'm sorry, Syria, and 7,000 out of Afghanistan. So, I mean, what, what's happening is he's running it by himself, 
And uh, with Mattis's resignation, strong letter, I saw that letter. Yeah, I'd like to read a quote, if I may, on yeah, that. Yeah, please. May I? Thank you. Because I, this letter of resignation certainly was not intended for Donald Trump. No. What it was intended for is the Republican senators and the Republicans in the House of Representatives. And a third part of the audience certainly was the American public. And you and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So what he said, and, and you know, he said, part of this quote, um, one core belief I've always held is that our strength as a nation is inextricably linked to the strength of our unique, comprehensive system of alliances and partnerships. While the U.S. remains the indispensable nation in a free world, we cannot protect our interests or serve that role effectively without maintaining strong alliances and showing respect to those allies. This is NATO. This is the, you know, this is it. This, this is our... This is our cornerstone of, of protection for Europe, protection in the free world. Yeah, and, and he's quitting. He's saying that while he's quitting, so he's making a huge statement. And the statement is uh, that Trump has done incalculable damage to NATO and the EU, and you can see it discombobulating every day in the news what's going on in Europe. You know, it's the first time in history um, a Secretary of Defense resigned in the nation of this country. It's a uh, very... Very bad, and, and it concerns me, and, yeah. I, and I feel it. Uh, I feel it as a shadow over my perception of the of the world and the reality and the country and the future. You know, we're we're diving down into a dark place, and our system can't handle it. They say, "Oh, the Constitution will weather any storm." I'm not sure. Um, he, he's he can he can create a war overnight for another distraction. Well, and this gets back to my. My concern is you had um, General Mattis and you had John Kelly on, as bookends, if you will, to kind of try to balance him out. Both gone. And they're both gone. So the replacement issue, who, what is the qualifications for the replacement? Certainly not competence. No. Certainly not um, you know, experience in a particular job role. It comes down to loyalty. Loyalty, which means yes men. So the, the government is being remade in Trump's image. Correct. It's being remade out of yes men. And it's not just the people in the White House, it's the department heads and all that. So what, what you have is, a, is people leave, and it's not just in the White House, leaving from other, other parts too. I would leave, honestly. I couldn't tolerate this if I was in that administration. Um, so they leave and then they are replaced by yes men, okay? And at the end of the day, what you have is a yes man government that doesn't do anything. So we've really lost the value of having all these offices. Um, and then at the same time, we've lost the value of having representative government. In well, the, in the there Congress. it is, you know, because if, if the executive branch starts going off on a, you know, a left, an extreme left turn, you would hope that, you know, the Senate and the House of Representatives would stand up on their own two and hide legs and say, look, we got to, you know, steer back onto course here. Yeah. And we're not quite getting that. I saw a glimpse of it, though. I saw glimmers and hope. Um, the crime bill. Yeah, that's one of them. Not enough. Not enough. I also saw Lindsey Graham uh, speak out, um, particularly about uh, Syria. Um, you know, you had Lindsey Graham saying, to say that ISIS is defeated is an overstatement and is fake news. Um, he also said if Obama made the decision, Republicans would be all over him. So, you know, you have, and Lizzie Graham's not, you know, he's not leaving the scene. He's still going to remain in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I see these little, little inklings of, of glimmer of McDonald, hope that. McDonald, same thing. You know, um, disagree with him. And Roberts on the Supreme Court, disagree with him. So, really, it raises here in our Trump Week discussion this week, um, the, the possibility that Trump is, like, on the other side of the tipping point here. And people are, are getting out. They're, they're not only quitting, but they're turning against his policies. Um, and they don't believe him anymore. Um, this is really a... For now. For now, but you know, we've he's seen this try before. reverse We've that. seen this before where they come out and speak out against, and yeah. then they, they kind of get back in line. <laughs> and, you know, they come rear their head out again and speak out. And so we don't know to what degree this, you know, this goes up and down. Yeah. But for right now, it, I, it gave me hope to see these comments coming from the Republicans, and under no circum two circumstances was it was it mild, like Kosoji. You saw the Republicans stand out against that. Yeah, that's true, and and it's the same process. 
And so, you know, I mean, really, we're, we're here on Friday here in Honolulu, and it's, uh, it's way after noon in, in, uh, in Washington. They were supposed to meet at noon. They were called back, meet at noon, and see whether, what they were going to do about the shutdown, another major piece today. We may not have that news right now, but it's coming soon. Um, and it remains to be seen what the uh, Republican leadership is going to do, what McConnell is going to do, and, and how effective uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are going to be, um, and, and whether they're going to fold on that $5 billion number just to be the good guys. Uh, if they don't fold, and I, and I frankly don't think they should fold, um, we're going to have a shutdown, and it could be for a long time, and it's going to be on Trump's head. And that could cost him dearly in terms of popularity among among people in government, but also his own base. And we'll look around how we, how we got here. We, um, you know, we had the, the meeting with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, and he made proclamations that I'll be proud to be the one to shut down this government, and it'll be my mantle to do so. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that wasn't happening. So then by Wednesday, we heard that, you know, we'll kick this can down the road, and we'll, you know, we'll get something out of it. But then you had the, you know, the talk shows. You had, um, you had Ann Coulter um, saying the following, Trump will just have to bend a joke presidency who scammed the American people, amused the populace for a while, but he'll have no legacy whatsoever. And then you had Fox and Friends come out and you had Rush Limbaugh come out. So who's running the country? Is it Rush Limbaugh and Ann Coulter? Because he then said, okay, you know, if I don't get my five billion again, that's it. Well, yeah, he said his base had convinced him that he should stick on that $5 billion. And really the question is what happens right now, in session, right now in Washington. Well, they don't have the 60 votes. We'll see what happens. Yeah. He's trying. Maybe, maybe it's a futile effort, but he's trying. You never know. He may resurrect what they almost agreed about, you know, the um, immigration bill, you know, last, last year. Who knows? Maybe they bring that out on the table. And it has DACA provisions and, you know, kind of a, a compromise, if you will. Yeah, I don't... I doubt it. I, I don't think we should have a wall. I never thought so. And most of the country doesn't think so. And it's really remarkable that here we are with people, um, you know, f trying to force us, ex extorting us Would you agree? Would you agree that his base really doesn't care about the Mexico will pay for it aspect of it? What do they care about? Would you, would you agree that that was a provision that, you know, had to be met, that Mexican, Mexico will pay for the wall? I, I don't think his well, base that was really... Un, that was unrealistic at the outset. And I think, I think his base knew that as well. Yeah. They just thought so that was well, kind of a campaign, a campaign slogan of yeah, sorts. You know, I, it's, it's maybe a little bit uh, conspiratorical, but it just seems to me that this could be part of what we were talking about before and what that defector was talking about before. A lot of um, uh, you know, social media goes into the crowds that are mm, polarized on this issue and stirs up the issue. And Trump thinks that they're stirring him up, and he goes back for more this afternoon. But really what we have is chaos. And uh, whenever I see chaos, I have the same reaction. I get a headache. And when I get a headache, I like to take a break. Okay. So <laughs> let's take a break. No Tylenol for you, though. <laughs> Tim Abichella, <laughs> we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We'll have cooler feelings then. Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Okay, we're back here in Trump's week. Um, <clears throat> this is a week of too much news and too much chaos, but we, our headaches are a little better now. That's Tim Apicella, I'm Jay Fidel, and we're talking about what happened this week and what could happen next week with Trump. So uh, yeah, so uh, we, have, we, have, we have the shutdown about the wall, and it's like extortion. It's like holding, holding the country. It's not just the federal, you know, 
employees and all that. It's a whole country hostage, stopping the government. This can't be good, only for one issue, where really it's obvious that people don't support the wall. They don't. They don't, they don't support the wall at all. It's not only not only supporting the wall that, um, you know, uh, having requiring Mexico to pay for the wall, and th that ridiculous argument that he made this week. Okay, he shifted. He, he said, oh, you know, we, we are, we, we, we're going to get them to pay for it because we had this, we, I negotiated this great uh, uh, trade agreement between Mexico and Canada, and the benefits of that would be so great that they are going to pay for the wall. That is rank so, Jay, <laughs> utter. If that was believable, you know, the Mexico-Canadian trade agreement, okay, if that was believable, why did he say in the second breath, uh, the military is going to pay for it too? <laughs> <laughs> now, what does this do for the people that are loyal and follow President Trump? I mean, how do you think I feel, or do, how do you take me to say, do I not know that the military is paid by my tax dollars? <laughs> it's all off the wall, literally. <laughs> Off the wall. That's right. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's happening here is it's devolving into chaos. Not only chaos in the sense of having people come and go in and out of the White House and in and out of government, but government itself seems to be in chaos. They can't get anything done. I read recently there's a number of bills that, that were passed and, you know, treated and passed in the Obama administration was X number of bills. In this past uh, year, what, 2018, there was a small fraction of bills. They can't get anything done. Well, Jay, he's got the he's got the goal and the trophy for executive orders. Does yeah, that count for something? I guess so. But you know what? Executive orders always can be reversed at the next administration. So, so let's assume that the sea change that we we think may be happening it's a, it's a long shot. I'll tell you more this afternoon when I see what happens with the wall uh, and the shutdown. But <clears throat> you know he, he's losing the confidence. I think his, his ratings are down, actually, maybe not that much, but down. I think he's losing confidence uh, even in the Senate. Uh, and he's lost the House, really, lost it. Um, he, Roberts voted against his, uh, his asylum position. Um, McConnell is taking a wax at him. Uh, gee, I mean, he's losing his people. Um, and, and, this, and, and because it's covered so much in the press, if you look at any major newspaper, it's all him. It's like 99% of all the articles in the paper about him. Well, if he wants attention, he's getting attention. The question is, <clears throat> if, if we perceive correctly that he's losing his ability, losing his ability to, to, to govern, losing his credibility among all these people and organizations, isn't it time for an impeachment? Not yet. Okay. I said the last show... Don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Let's wait for the Mueller report because it's going to offer a lot more than what's been presented so far as the Michael Cohen situation. I'm sure there's more. So there's going to be a lot more. So I, 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 I'm hesitant to talk about impeachment because, again, once you start talking about it, it becomes repetitious. It loses its luster. It, the American public becomes desensitized to it. And therefore, when the real stuff comes out, the real juicy parts... Um, it'll be old news, old hat. Well, let's, let's, let's come back one step and talk about Mueller. Um, so last week, we had a lot of stuff coming out about Mueller. It was really all bad for Trump. I mean, that's why he did so many things to distract us this week. That's exactly, you know, his, his M.O. Um, but, but where is Mueller? I mean, the silence is deafening. What's going on here? Has been from the start. I guess so. You know, he's been very, very disciplined. Yep, no and, leaks. But he has been communicating um, through his, um, you know, his indictments and that's you know, the way he communicates <clears throat> through court papers. Well, you yes, and you you communicate even louder when everything's redacted. I mean, pages and pages redacted, and the American public sees all these black markouts and going, now what could be under that? You yeah. know, so he's communicating loud and clear. It's just in very uh, unique uh, format. Okay, well, well, but where does it point? Where do you think, you know, he's going? Where do you, th what do you think he has? I, I think you're going to see more of the Russia connection. I think you're going to see more of the, how the Russian, um, Russians have either funded Trump empire and all that interaction for many years and how that may have influenced him uh, to do certain things, say certain things, 
tried to extinguish certain sanctions against Russia in, in you know, in uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, help me out here. Um, okay. Sanctions. Uh, sanctions is the word I'm looking for. Right, right. And the bottom line is um, you're going to start seeing correlations to that. Yeah, and, and uh, coming back to my, uh, my, um, uh, my Russian uh, defector, uh, some of that's going to be proven or disproven uh, by the Mueller report. What I find very interesting, by the way, about this week is that when he announced sui sponte himself without conferring with anybody, a major geopolitical move, a major military move that he was leaving Syria in the lurch, uh, leaving the Kurds that we have supported. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, suddenly, all of a sudden, and just changing, changing the balance there, uh, we, without realizing, without knowing, without thinking about what would happen, one, and everybody criticized him for it. I mean, nobody agreed with him except one person, Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Putin came out immediately after the announcement by Trump and said, gee, he agreed with that. That was a yeah, good move. I'm going to fill in the vacuum even further. Yeah, it was, it you guys leave, we get we get to come in more. Yeah, that's you know we're going to get our toehold in the Middle East again. And that's where we want to well, be. Right, and he's going for territory. He's going for power. And that's you know, and, and what's it say in the Middle East about our being an ally? Um, you know, it's not the first time we kind of turned our backs when we were in the Iraq and Afghanistan. How many um, local tribesmen became interpreters? How many came and, and tried to be the liaison between a village and the U.S. military and, you know, put their life on the line? And then we turned their back, our backs on them because wouldn't, we wouldn't allow them to immigrate um, and find a safe haven, if you will. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we, we've managed to muck up the whole area. So our relations with Turkey are lousy because we supported the Kurds. Our relationship with the Kurds is really lousy because we turned our backs on them. And ISIS is still there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he said, we've won the war. I love when guys do that. That's, a, you know, another gross That's lie. That's a mission accomplished kind of mission statement. Mission accomplished. We've yeah. seen that before. Yeah, we saw that before. But, but here, is, there's no question in anybody's mind, including the military, that ISIS is still there, alive and well, and this will encourage them and allow them to expand. But well, remember, our commander-in-chief said the following, and he meant it on uh, November the 13th, 2015. I know more about ISIS than the generals do. Believe me. Remember that? Yes, I do. Well, I bet General Mattis didn't believe him. Right. And finally, General Mattis has said, I've had enough. Right. That's, just, you know, just as um, we don't know what's in the Mueller investigation, uh, we don't know all that was going on in the Oval Office. We don't know all that was going on with Kelly and Mattis. It was much more the mm -hmm. drama you know, it's not yet known. It'll come out. So when do you books. think this is all going to hit the, hit the pavement? When the Mueller investigation and, and all, the, all the details that would potentially constitute an impeachment hearing. I don't think Miller is timing it so that, you know, it, it has maximum effect for uh, an impeachment. I, I think he's just doing it professionally. And when he's ready, he's ready. And the, the press is always speculating you know, it'll be tomorrow, yeah. it'll be next week. I think week. I heard February, but, you know, you know it's speculation. It's, it's speculation because he's not letting anything leak. Why would he let this leak? Right. And there's no purpose in it. So, uh, que sera, sera, it'll be when, when it'll mm -hmm. be. And I don't, I don't think anybody's guess is, anybody, is better than anybody else's guess. And I don't have a feeling one way or the other. I, I hope I have. <laughs> right. My hope is I hope it happens soon because we need to clear the air on this. And if there are impeachable offenses in there, and it sounds like there might be. Remember the thing came out this week about um, there, was a, there was a letter signed by Trump about Trump Tower in Moscow? Oh, yes. He knew very well what was yeah. going on. He denied knowing, but the signature is right on the well, paper. All these points are starting to converge very slowly. They are. Uh, look at the foundation that was shut down by the New York uh, Attorney General. Yeah. Um, you know, That's that another point of lack of confidence or... Uh, more than lack of confidence, the point of finding that he had his finger in the jar, uh, big time. Well, and he I, always I, does. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're an independent. When you contribute to a charity, the worst thing you can find out is that money was being abused for your own self-interest yeah. and for your own selfish yeah. purposes. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, and I don't mean to take a too far of a, a turn off this one, but when you buy, spend twelve thousand dollars for a Tim Tebow helmet, football helmet. 
um, when you spend <laughs> donation political dollars uh, and it's coming from the charity and you're using giveaways in Iowa, that's all been discovered from this foundation. When you have um, artwork, which is portraits of themselves, and you spend $30,000 of charity money for your own portraits of yourself, and then you put them in your own, your own properties, you know, I don't care what side of the fence you sit on, you're not going to appreciate that. That's corruption. You know, um, and I think and it was kind of, simple. and this was known when, you know, before the election took place two years ago, it was known, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a good reminder for people to say, what, what we, who have we hired here? Well, the big question, and this is my last question here today, is why is the base, whatever the base is, still sticking with him? Is it because the Russians are still actively, you know, brainwashing them? Uh, is it because they're, you know, they're just um, not going to be affected? The, the, uh, what, what the uh, defector said in the tape, he said that if you brainwash them, and it takes 15 years to brainwash. So this all started, the brainwashing started before Trump. Once you brainwash a generation of school kids, you can't change their minds. Nothing you do can erase the brainwash. And somehow they've been brainwashed, a la the defectors process, active measures to, to students in school. Um, you can't do anything about it. I mean, isn't that, well, what's, what's happening Politics, here? like religion, are the hardest things to change people's minds about. If it was a value or an attitude, much, much easier. But because politics is very close to a belief system, very, very difficult. Yeah. And that's like, what they've been working on, is on a belief system. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not optimistic about the base changing its mind, because it hasn't changed its mind yet. I, I'm going to answer part of your question was why, you know, how does this continue on? I, I'm not sure the immigration issue ever, from Donald Trump's position, ever wants to be resolved, because that's such a visceral, emotional issue for not only his base, but many others that have voted for him. And if I solve it, where is the motivation for them to be loyal to me? Right, right. So it is the immigration issue that is a key component right. to, a, of, of their loyalty to him. A pathological leader is always going to be looking for scapegoats. Yep. And a lot of what he does is just that. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Tim Thank Mantella. you, Jay. Appreciate Next it very week much. soon, we'll talk some more. We'll have plenty of note cards. Trump week. Chaos. You You'll see. Aloha.